Hello, I'm Melissa and we are going to look at a headstand tutorial today. So, inversions, one thing I will say is I absolutely love doing inversions. Um, my day is not complete if I haven't been upside down, so I really love teaching inversions as well. Um, one of the very first inversions that I ever learned myself was a headstand. And we are going to look at a Sirsasana version of a headstand where we take our forearms down to the ground and interlace our fingers and then the crown of the head is going to move in between the hands. We're going to press the floor away. Um, there are many, many different options in this tutorial, so go with whichever option that suits you best. But I wouldn't just go into a headstand as a complete beginner through in the yoga practice. I would build up to working towards headstand. So some postures that can really build some strength and stability into the core, into the shoulders, to prep towards head, headstand are downward facing dog. So a simple downward facing dog really starts to get into the core, into the shoulders, allows you to really press the earth away and it is almost mimics a position that we will see later in our headstand as well. So that's a really, really great posture to start to work towards a headstand. Um, another posture that's a great one is dolphin pose. And you can take your forearms shoulder width distance apart and the fingers are pointing down towards the floor. If you know you have really tight shoulders though, it can be good to interlace the fingers as well. Or keep the hands placing down onto the floor. And then we'll tuck the toes under and then lift the hips up to the sky, but you're hovering your head off the ground here. And you might walk the feet slightly closer towards the hands. You don't want to collapse into the shoulders. You really want to press the earth away, rolling the shoulders away from the ears. Biceps are rolling inwards and triceps are rolling outwards. And you're pressing the forearms down into the ground. You take probably about five breaths here. So that's another posture that allows you to work up towards a headstand. And also anything that might strengthen into the core, such as a plank position, pressing the earth away, crown of the head is moving forward, heels are lifting back behind you, and you're in this long, straight line, shoulder blades are spreading wide. You can always do this with the knees down onto the ground as well. So that's a really good one. Also a Navasana boat pose. Some of my regular students in yoga class will know that I quite like this posture and they might not like this posture so much. <laughs> so take the toes to touch, knees together, start to rock up high onto the sit bones, extending the spine straight and long. And you might just hover the feet off the ground. You might lift to this 90 degree angle. Maybe extending the arms and you'll notice that it really fires up around the center. The hamstrings are more open. You might start to straighten out through the legs and just breathe. And then just hug these back into the chest. So there, they are a few postures that you can work up, use to work up towards a headstand. So let's go. So coming down onto your mats, let's come on into a kneeling position and send the hips towards the heels. We'll extend the arms out into a child's pose. And just breathing a few breaths. And starting to just calm the mind, relax the body. Inversions can be quite intimidating postures as well to start with. So just as you inhale, breathing in a little bit of courage And resilience and strength. And slowly just rise up to this kneeling position. And taking hold of opposite elbows, we'll take the elbows down onto the floor. And just start to walk your knees back. 
and then interlace the fingers out in front of you and this is your stance for your headstand. So you want to keep your elbows directly where they are and they're underneath the shoulders as well. And then you want to place the crown of the head, so the very, very top part of the head, in between the hands. And then from here you want to tuck the toes under. You are welcome to stay here as well. So this is an option number one, just noticing what it feels like to be on the crown of the head. Then when you're ready, if you're, if you're ready, tuck the toes under, start to lift the hips up to the sky and we'll walk the feet in. So you're in this modified version of a downward facing dog but you're on your forearms and the core is completely engaged you've got a slight tuck of the tailbone but the tailbone should be directly stacked on top of the shoulders and you're again you're not collapsing into the shoulders you really want to press the earth away so you've got lots of energy through your forearms you might keep walking and eventually you'll notice that the feet get lighter and lighter and lighter and you might see you can hug one knee into the chest, squeeze, really squeeze the knee in towards the chest and then plant the sole of the foot down to the ground. Maybe go for the other side. Maybe you do that a few times. Just shifting weight, noticing, pulling up really through the centre because that's what's really going to support you in this posture. And if you're ready, you hug one knee into the chest, rise up high onto the ball of that back foot. And then slowly both hug both knees into the chest. You might stay here in this monkey stand, as I like to call it. And just hover and just notice. And you have everything stacking on top of each other, so you've got hips directly stacked on top of shoulders crown of the head really glued towards the ground and when you're ready you might see then if you can extend both legs up towards the sky keeping everything hugged into centre line keeping everything engaged completely solid energy moving up through the feet and don't forget to breathe that's the most important part so I'm going to breathe and stop talking. <laughs> Shoulders energising up towards the sky. And to come out of it, you hug one knee into the chest, hug the other knee into the chest, coming back to this monkey stand. And then you tap one foot down to the ground, other foot down to the ground, and just sit in a child's pose. And take a few breaths. And just to reset. And so some of the benefits of a headstand is that it really allows the blood to flow back towards the eyes, the head, into the heart. And so before you come back up to a seated position or a standing position, it's really good to just breathe. So the blood can just flow back where it needs to. And then slowly, when you're ready, just rise up to that seated kneeling position. And you're always welcome to use a wall as well of headstand. I, I wouldn't normally recommend a wall, um, especially not to kick up into a headstand because that can really start to jar into the shoulders and sometimes we can really start to flip over um, and maybe move off to one direction. But you can use a wall there almost as a bit of a block. So sometimes if I was going to do an adjustment in a headstand, I would stand behind someone. So the wall can almost act as just something there. So you don't feel like you're just going to fall completely over but try not to use it if you can as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in. 
Um, I would be, would be happy to answer any questions about headstand. Like I said, I absolutely love going upside down. I would recommend probably only when you first start going into inversions and headstands, probably just taking a few breaths, just probably five breaths maximum. And then you can work up to taking a longer headstand for further breaths. Thank you so much. Namaste.